Hi and welcome to SQL Injection Master Course. My name is Hitesh and below is my web homepage where you can access my website, can access learn from Hitesh section and can reduce a lots of third party resource prices from all of my courses. So definitely this is a really important talk that why I always do in the very start of my lecture. So let us start with this lecture and try to learn some more commands that would be really helpful for you to inject in some of the other application. Now, I personally like this idea, first of all, running all the things on the command prompt with the MySQL so that you can learn the syntax of what we are actually performing instead of just mugging out the things and just putting them on the web application. Of course, reading out the source code is an important part of this exercise, according to me, for all the SQL injection. That's why I'm giving you all the files for the SQL injection, not like some other courses where you just have the access of lab. So I definitely could have put all these videos in some of my website, got some hits from you, uh, could have raised my SEO as well, but definitely I expect that you automatically are going to visit my homepage and that would be just a Thanksgiving for me. So let us uh, start this video and let's move back to our what we have here. And let me first of all jump into the SQL backtrack instance and first of all I have to start as always my Apache 2 start and please also start my SQL I hope it's a bit more uh, visible and I think that is uh, it is far more clear than anything else so what you can do out here is very simple first of all let us start my SQL with a username of root and of course the password too. Okay, so MySQL prompt is running. Now I would like to introduce a couple of new functions or you can say commands of MySQL that would be really helpful for you since we are focusing now on the time-based SQL injection. Now first of all, what is time-based SQL injection? In some of the queries, you don't actually get any output in the form of errors by hitting a single code, backslash or anything like that. Uh, you always get uh, some message that is always out there, whether you put a uh, one there, whether you, whether you put a thousand there or anything like that. So that application might be, again, I'm using a word might be vulnerable to the SQL application vulnerable attack. So for that, at some point of instance, we can use this time-based SQL injection. Of course, this exercise file would be there for you so that you can learn more about these types of injections and can uh, actually evade with that or can use for pen testing purpose. So first of all, the command is select. And I would like to use this command now, sleep. Now sleep is a really good important command for the time-based SQL injection. And let's say if I do a sleep 10, so you are now seeing that cursor is only blinking and nothing is happening actually on my SQL command prompt. So as the 10 seconds will pass on, I know it's a big time and I'm just uh, waiting for it. So after 10 seconds, it gives me that, hey, you have run this command. So this is really important for the time-based SQL injection. Now, if I put this command in such a manner that you can use somehow the if clause with it, then really things can be get interesting for us because if has a simple clause that we will program it in such a manner that if the condition is true, the cursor will only blink at that moment. That means the cursor is going to not respond for a few seconds and eventually in the application, it will just load up, load up and load up the things. So I hope you got the point what we are trying to do. So uh, let us do a select and let me put a if here and I would like to have some things here. Let's say for example, in the bracket, I would like to have select and let me put a database here. Just as always, we always put a database here. And what we would like to have the database, let's have some uh, things in it. So let's have, let me give it security. I know this is the database. I'm just taking some leverage, you can say. So uh, it the if clause actually takes, takes the three argument. So the condition is true. And I would like to have a sleep for 10 seconds. Let's say for example, uh, sleep 10 is good and the third is nothing actually for, so I will just write null here you can also write something else here but in the meantime I would just put a null here I hope I have matched all the brackets this is really the thing I have been doing quite a lot in the previous video so I think yes I have matched that so you will see that instantly it has returned us the database and uh, what we can do out here 
that the things can be modified further by the database query we can modify it to the uh, you can say version or anything like that so first of all let me check what is out there okay so we are putting security here and then we are putting a sleep 10 and finally the null character so that's uh, pretty much okay for us with right now let me move it at the top okay so we are having a if clause here and it is after that we are selecting the database value from it and then we have got the value of the database that is security and make it a sleep for 10 and then just return it now what happened if I by mistake uh, got a thing from it so again it shouldn't have done in this way again like in the previous video I have make some mess around here so let me just check out first of all if I haven't done any typo so select if then a bracket start bracket start for select database uh, is a function yes of course it's a function closing the bracket equals to security yes it is our database and then putting up a comma sleep that is the second function and then the null and putting it up so I think things are working but somehow it is not so let me put up an, another query to just verify if uh, we are thinking in the right direction version and in place of these things I have to put something else like let's say equal to is not a good so we can what we can do we can put a like here uh, is the database somewhat like you can say five and of course I have to use a person sign so uh, now you can see the database is actually blinking so equal to is not working for us in this case in this case what is working for us is five or you can say like so database is like one more thing interestingly I find out that uh, in the previous video I've asked you a one simple question that was hey uh, why that uh, in the previous video why that boolean injection is not working for if I am putting up a database name equals to five or six or maybe four or three so the simple answer could be uh, the reason why it is happening is because we are just putting a decimal value over there and not the ASCII value now yes I can understand you might be laughing out there that hey uh, this was pretty easy as the terminal was expecting the ASCII value and we were putting out the decimal value how it can be correct so uh, that's a one command that we can have is version like uh, person 5 now what I can do here uh, in order to find out the name here so let me do that uh, by just removing the core query that is version I would remove this version uh, instead I would like to put a substring sub str and in that function I would like to put up table underscore name and I would put again substring requires two things that is one comma one I would like to start from one and I would like to end from one and after that what I can do simply here is I can actually make it uh, let's say complete the query from information underscore schema dot tables of course don't forget to put your where clause because it's the only thing that is going to end up the things so table underscore schema dot information underscore schema dot tables where table underscore schema equals to database okay and of course since it will return too many rows I don't want to make a mess again in this video I know I have been doing a lots of mess but really this is the way how we hacker things do a lots of enumeration and everything it's not like that every time I'm going to be perfect in that of course I'm making quite a mistake around and doing some things like that but really doesn't matter and what I can do here after limit uh, that I can put some equals value hope equals to work for me this time and I'm really expecting now let me put up uh, two single quotes here perhaps the double quote is not being taken by so these things happens quite a lot with the databases 
and let me delete that everything else so I know that my table name from the first uh, table in my database is actually email so that's why I'm putting a e here now what will happen if the query is perfectly right the database will uh, the command prompt will wait for a few seconds that is uh, the 10 second sleep it will win and if it is not correct uh, then it will automatically jump so that's how we actually iterate ourselves in the time-based injection so it has immediately repeated uh, it so definitely we have done some uh, wrong things here in the query so let me fix that up quickly equals to database limit is 0 comma 1 and it is equals to e again things are not working here sleep 10 null that's perfectly fine uh, i think the equals function is not working like this manner let me again try again so it's not working perhaps i'm mistaking out here so this time i really want to solve what is happening with my typing so let me get a couple of things here so select if tab select substring table underscore name one comma one from information underscore schema dot tables information underscore schema dot tables where table underscore schema equals to database so let's say if database is not working perhaps uh, let me put a security here I really want to make things working so that was the reason actually it was not selecting the database automatically I have to put in the database really that was a huge thing for me so I hope you also expect to me to be perfectly fine at one place in just a one go but definitely it's not going to do like that so and if I do a E here instead let's say put H as my name starts with the H it's automatically going to return everything for me and in that case if I do uh, again let's say E and I know the second thing is M that is emails and what I can do here is I can put up two here and again it's uh, waiting for me not just blinking out everything so the same thing is actually I hope you got the basic code syntax how you can find out the table name the database the versions and everything out there uh, with the time based SQL injection so that's the core logic behind it and without making our video too much longer I would like to end up with so many mistakes I really apologize for that but definitely we have learned a lot thank you so much for watching